Welcome back to the Platform Engineering channel, where we normally speak very highly of Platform Engineering and pretty bad of everything else. Except today, we're flipping the script. While Platform Engineering done right can be a huge boost for your organization, Platform Engineering done poorly can create a whole new type of hell for you. I'm Luca from the Platform Engineering community, and today I'm walking you down the nine steps to Platform Engineering hell. Step number one, you rename the DevOps team to Platform Team, but you still do Ticket Ops. Congratulations, you just established your first Platform Team, except they're still fly with Slack messages and Ticket Ops, and they don't actually have time to design your IDP. Step two, there's no mindset shift to Platform as a product. So your Platform Team, formerly known as your Ops Team, continues to have to write pipelines and automations based on all the inbound requests from different teams. Your platform team now has to grow to keep up with the demand, but your setup is not getting any more scalable. Step three, your platform team is building a platform for themselves, not for the developers. All right, so now your platform team is growing. You're hiring very talented, very experienced platform engineers or formerly ops engineers and they are trying to figure out what are the most important problems that the platform needs to solve. And in order to figure that out, they look back at their own past, at their own careers. What they don't know yet, developers will never use this platform. Why? Because they're solving for ops problems, not for devs problems. Adoption, zero. Millions burned, four. Step four, you replace old tech with new stuff for no reason. Even more platform engineers are being hired and everybody wants to work with the latest tech. So you start replacing Jenkins with GitHub Actions, VMs with Kubernetes, you introduce Terraform, then you replace it with Crossplane again. And so costs go up and productivity suffers. Step number five, you think your setup needs to be special. So because everyone needs to be and feel special, custom workloads start popping up all over the enterprise and custom integrations start popping up on top of that. Now, believe me, if you are a e-commerce selling sneakers online, you don't need a highly customized, highly available Kubernetes setup. You're not that special. Step six, you build a portal that developers never asked for. So someone in the platform team has heard that developer experience and developer portals are all the rage and the hot new thing in town. And so off you go, you start building one because if you build it, they'll come. Guess what? Adoption, still zero, million spent, eight. Step seven, new platform engineering silos pop up everywhere. Because you're a large enterprise, and there's not a lot of communication and coordination going on across different business units, management has decided to start in parallel different platform engineering initiatives. So now, a few months in, you find yourself with four different internal developer platforms. They all have very poor adoption, millions burned, 50. Step eight, you try to hide sunken costs. VPs, directors, head offs are all starting to get nervous. Where do you hide? No one dares to say out loud, but the current platform just simply doesn't work. You would have to replace it entirely. Your company is starting to fall behind competitors, but on paper, everything looks good because middle management just came up with some random metrics of the health of the platform and everything looks shiny. But the reality is everything is falling apart and the best on your platform team have already left. Step nine you get fired. How does it all end? Well, you probably get fired, the company goes down, it gets acquired by a competitor, who knows? The point is, it's not good. And that was your staircase to platform engineering hell. Sounds pretty bad, right? But you already know how to avoid that. Subscribe, join the community, and stay tuned for the next video.